Hey, what's up guys, I'm Matt with the Movement System. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to train fast twitch muscle fibers. There's some really interesting science involved in training fast twitch muscle fibers and optimizing our speed and our strength. We're gonna answer some questions based on that science and then give you some practical takeaways on how you can use that information to maximize your adaptations and your athlete's adaptations. Let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, so we're gonna start by diving into the science here and really understanding the muscle physiology because that will really help us understand the training principles that will come later. So when we're breaking up the classifications of muscle fibers, we're gonna classify them as type one, type two A, or type two X fibers. You may have also heard of type two B fibers, but those really aren't present to a high extent in humans. So it's probably best to simplify the model, which most research does, and use this classification system. So importantly, you may have heard that sprinters, for example, are fast twitch and have really high proportions of type twos, and then endurance athletes have high proportions of type ones. And that's actually true, but we have to understand what that means and understand that there's variability between muscle groups in the body, even for a sprinter who's generally high proportion type two. So some important things to understand about this fiber type distribution is that for a sprinter, we may have up to around 80% fast twitch fibers and 20% slow twitch fibers in certain muscle groups, such as the quadriceps, that are important for sprinting and jumping and athletic movements. That said, even in sprinters, there are gonna be some muscles like the soleus that are generally slow twitch muscles, even if you are a sprinter. So overall, a sprinter may have a fast twitch build, but they still have certain muscle groups that are more oxidative and slow twitch. All right, and getting into the hardcore science of how this is determined, we actually do research studies where we get muscle biopsies, which is basically a big, thick needle going straight into the quad or the calf or whatever muscle you're trying to analyze, and then we take out a chunk of muscle, like a physical chunk of muscle that you could see, and then we put that under a microscope, and we analyze what's called the myosin-heavy chains. So you may remember from muscle physiology class that we have actin and myosin, which forms cross bridges and makes our muscle fibers. And that's what actually allows the sliding filament theory to occur and allows our muscles to contract. And when we do training, we can build more actin and myosin, build more cross bridges, which makes the muscle bigger with muscle hypertrophy. And it also makes the muscle stronger because we have more cross bridges that can connect and then cause a forceful muscle contraction. Stick with me because we're going deep into the muscle physiology here. And this is exciting. We can build specific myosin heads, meaning that we can build a myosin head that contracts faster or one that contracts slower. So whenever you're done with training and you eat protein, your body can actually signal to the undifferentiated stem cells, which are gonna turn into myosin heads, whether they should turn into fast twitch fiber heads or should they turn into slow twitch fiber heads. And over time, that change in the type of fiber head that you're building will actually change our muscle fiber type. So just to back up, when we were doing training, we damaged at a micro trauma level the myosin heads that are forming those cross bridges. Those damaged heads can rebuild as new myosin heads, and those new heads might not be the same as the ones that we damaged. And this is super exciting, so I hope you guys are just as excited as I am about this. Because what this means is that over time, we can change our muscle fiber type distribution. And although the physiology of this is really well understood, we actually don't have really good longitudinal studies because it takes months and years to actually see these fiber type transitions occur, but we know generally what type of fiber type transitions do occur. And the most common fiber type transition is a fiber type transition from type 2X fibers to type 2A fibers. And this fiber type transition actually occurs from most types of training, whether you do muscular endurance training, hypertrophy training, speed training, sprint training, interval training, we're going to see that shift from type 2X to type 2A fiber type. And why is that occurring? Well, our type 2A fibers are actually our most fatigue resistant and athletic fibers. These are really good muscle fibers to have. And we tend to see that elite athletes have a higher proportion of type 2A fibers and very little or no type 2X fibers after they've done a lot of training. Shifting the myosin head isoform from type 2X to type 2A allows muscle fibers to fatigue less during training and recover faster while still producing high force and high power output. Type 2A is a really good athletic fiber type and that's a beneficial positive transition that we see regardless of training type. Now some secondary fiber type transitions that we see are actually from type two to type one or type one to type two. And actually because of the length of time that it takes for this fiber type transition to occur, it's actually really hard based on the current evidence to know how much this occurs, but we do know that it occurs to some extent and that our fibers do preferentially respond to the specific demands of the training that we do. So especially over a long period of time, 
fiber type will respond to the force velocity characteristics of the training and the sport that you are doing. All right, so knowing this, let's look at the example of a American football player or a sprinter or a high jump athlete, someone who wants to maximize the adaptations of these type two fiber transition types and transition to more of a fast switch fiber profile over time and maximize the adaptations in their current fast switch fibers, what type of training should we do? So there are really two ways to activate our fast twitch fibers. One of those ways would be with selective recruitment. And this occurs to some extent in untrained athletes, but to a greater extent in moderate to a very well-trained athletes. So what is selective recruitment? It's when we are activating our fast twitch muscle fibers before our slow twitch muscle fibers because of a high force demand. And in order to do this, we actually have to train the neural pathway going from our brain to our fast switch muscle fibers and make that pathway a little bit more efficient. So what we typically see when we're trying to recruit muscle is what's called the size principle. We recruit the type ones and then we get into the type two A's and then we get into the type two X's if we need them. So for really heavy loads, we would get to the type two X's, but for lighter loads, if we're not doing it to failure, we would generally stay with the type ones. And in most cases, this is what occurs. But especially for well-trained athletes, we may skip right to the type 2A and type 2X fiber recruitment if we have a really well-developed neural pathway to those muscle groups. Meaning that over time, if we're training with sprints, if we're training with dynamic effort lifts, if we're training with speed strength work like med ball throws and explosive movements, then over time we can selectively recruit, especially our type 2A fibers, to recruit faster and produce force more quickly and kind of shortcut that size principle. The other way to technically activate type two fibers is to get closer and closer to failure with reps. So even if we have a 10 rep max load or a 15 rep max load, if we approach that repetition max and we approach failure, we're gonna actually shift towards using more type twos at the end of that set because our muscles are basically gonna get anything they can to produce that force and finish the set. That said, it's probably not the most efficient way to maximize speed and power, because the adaptations associated with those slow grinding reps are more about maximal force and not about maximal contraction velocity or rate of force development. So activating our type 2A fibers that way may be a little bit more efficient for a power lifter or someone who's more focused on the force side of things. But for our athletes who are trying to maximize speed and power, we tend to want to be closer to the velocity side of things and doing these quick movements to get adaptations that way. All right, so let's answer some questions you might have here. And the first one is, how would you know if you are fast twitch or slow twitch? And the answer is you probably wouldn't know. And you probably fall somewhere within the standard distribution here. So most people are gonna fall kind of towards the middle, which may be like a 50-50 slow twitch, fast twitch, fiber type distribution. And although this is a little bit oversimplified, maybe you have towards one end of the curve, a sprinter who's like 80% fast twitch, 20% slow twitch. And then the very other end of the bell curve, you have someone who's an endurance athlete who's 80% slow twitch, 20% fast twitch. You really won't know where you fall in that distribution unless you can get into a lab and do a muscle biopsy, which is a fairly intense procedure and really only for research purposes. But that said, we can do training that shifts us towards one side or shifts us towards the other. It is probably the case that if you are towards the fast twitch side, your muscles do preferentially respond to growth a little bit better. And if you are towards the slow twitch side, your muscles do preferentially respond towards oxidative capacity a little bit better and not so much towards growth. So there's some things that we can't control here. But like I said before, depending on the training style that you're doing, you can shift yourself a little bit on this curve one way or another because of the growth of those new myosin isoforms. So overall takeaways, if we want to maximize our fast switch fibers, we want to do training such as this in-season program where we're going to optimize for speed strength and power creation with things like depth jumps, split squat jumps, barbell exercises that are done heavy but fast. So doing six rep max load for three rep max, for example, as well as using light loads with something like a medicine ball and moving at very high velocity. And that would be our speed strength work or our dynamic effort work, which we want to incorporate into these programs. Working on sprints and resisted sprints and hill sprints and all those different variations can also be really beneficial for creating this fiber type transition. And although the primary fiber type transition will be from type 2X to type 2A, that does not mean that you're getting less fast twitch. Again, that's a more athletic fiber and it's a really beneficial transition to see. If you guys do have any questions about training fast switch fibers or this program or anything else, go ahead and drop them in the comments below. I did link some research articles as well in the comments below if you are interested in diving into this subject a little bit more. And make sure you go ahead and check out the other videos on my channel that explain some of these topics that we may have breezed over a little bit in this video. Subscribe so you don't miss any future videos as well, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.